Hello, and welcome to today's podcast. I'm Dr. Diane Elmore Bourbon, Policy Program Director at the National Center for Child Traumatic Stress. This is the first in our series of National Child Traumatic Stress Network podcasts focused on trauma informed care for unaccompanied immigrant youth. Today, we'll be joined by two colleagues from the Alliance for Inclusion and Prevention in Boston, Massachusetts. First, Susan Lovett is a licensed clinical social worker, a certified K through six classroom teacher, a registered yoga teacher, and a certified mindfulness instructor. Susan is a program director with the Alliance for Inclusion and Prevention Center for Trauma Care in Schools. She's also the founding director of Hands to Heart Center, Yoga for the People, a nonprofit organization that shares the healing practice of yoga with people uh, affected by addiction, poverty, and trauma. Susan is a member of the NCTSN's Secondary Traumatic Stress Collaborative Group and is a faculty member at the Boston University School of Social Work and with the Center for Trauma and Embodiment. We're also joined today by Doris Lemus, a cultural liaison with the Alliance for Inclusion and Prevention. Doris immigrated to the United States from El Salvador in 2013 as an unaccompanied child and later became a sponsor to her younger siblings. Doris arrived in the United States with a fourth grade education and has since learned English, graduated from high school, and is now a college student majoring in psychology. I'd like to turn it over to Susan and Doris to share their work with us. Great, thanks Diane. Uh, as Diane said, I'm Susan Lovett at the Alliance for Inclusion and Prevention in Boston. And um, I'll be talking to Doris and, and happy to share the um, kind of review of some work that we did together over the past year. And I am very happy to now uh, present Doris. Hi, uh, my name is Doris Lemus. I am an unaccompanied, unaccompanied child and a current college student. I am working a part time as a cultural liaison with the Alliance for Inclusion and Prevention and Children's Hospital. I have been doing this job for a little more than a year. Great, thanks, Doris. So, Doris and I both work in some capacity for the nonprofit organization Alliance for Inclusion and Prevention also known as AIP. And AIP has been in Boston for 25 years, and um, it's a children's mental health agency that partners with school districts to serve the most vulnerable students in the districts and has really transitioned into um, a training agency. So doing lots of trainings with classroom teachers, uh, school social workers, and social work interns in evidence-based trauma treatment protocols and also evidence-based treatments in general for um, working with youth in schools. And the name of our project is the Center for Trauma Care in Schools. And it's, um, it's uh, federally funded by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration and allows us to be, um, to be participants of the National Child Traumatic Stress Network. So, Doris and I both do different things with AIP, but um, for this podcast, we're going to talk about the groups that we ran for students at the Umana School in East Boston. And East Boston is a neighborhood of, of Boston, um, primarily with Latinx families. Um, it's a neighborhood that is, has, has been and is going through a lot of transition. Um, a lot of Boston neighborhoods are gentrifying. And East Boston is, is certainly one of them. So um, the, many of the students and families at the Umana School um, are immigrants and refugees. Um, they are bright and curious and, and lively. And um, also, they, many of them have been um, exposed to trauma. There are a, a lot of families are um, living in public housing and in neighborhoods where there is just density of poverty um, and some density of community violence. Um, AIP is a partner of the Umana. We love working with them. We love supporting this, um, this school and their 
staff and their students and families. So um, when we approach them about potentially offering a new curriculum that's called STRONG, they were very interested. So we piloted some of the first STRONG groups in the country, and STRONG is an acronym for Supporting Transition Resilience of Newcomer Groups. And um, Doris and I both were able to be trained in this curriculum and then I was also trained as a trainer of this curriculum. I was able to go to New York to get my training, and then we brought the training to Boston, where Doris could be trained. So um, it's, it's new, and it's specifically focusing on newcomers, and that's how we're referring to um, students who are refugees and immigrants. And it doesn't, um, they don't have to have been in the country for any, kind of minimum or maximum amount of time, schools can determine which students would benefit the most. And it's, it's similar to bounce back and CBITS for people who may be familiar with those curriculums. Uh, CBITS is Cognitive Behavioral Intervention for Trauma in Schools, and bounce back is the version of that for elementary students. So like those two groups, Strong has 10 sessions, and um, it's a lot of skill building, and it allows students to talk about their journey. Not, it allows them to talk if they want to about the time in their native country, their journey, and then experiences here in the United States. Um, we do some body calming practices. We do some social problem solving. And it really creates uh, a, a a connected group where students know that they're not alone in their experiences and they can really have a lot of their experience kind of um, validated and supported. So um, this was going to be either either the first strong group in the country or the maybe second or third. So when we were really new, it hadn't really it hadn't been done before. So we were we weren't we didn't really have anyone's um, anyone's lessons to you know, to learn from, we were gonna, we were just gonna pioneer this on our own, and uh, the school had developed for us a group of fourth graders and a group of seventh grade girls. So that we had, we had about eight fourth graders, and then we had five seventh grade girls, and we those those two groups were separate, but we did them on the same day. So. Um, so here we are, me and Doris, and Doris and I have worked together a little bit before, but not really in depth. Um, I was really excited to work with her. It was my first time working with a cultural liaison. And so that was one of the special components of, of our implementation of the strong groups was the corporation, incorporation of a cultural liaison. And we'll get to hear from Doris about that role and how you know in my, she really excelled in that. And, um, and again, both it was new to both of us. So um, we define that as a cultural liaison as someone who has standing within a community culture group and is willing to serve as a link between the community and in our in this occasion the school. So she's um, so Doris can tell you about herself as a former unaccompanied child and how she was there to be able to not only translate, which she did, but also just to be able to um, relate to the students' experiences, share her own that she felt comfortable sharing with, um, share shared references, um, and that proved to be a, a really powerful aspect of the program. So we'll tell you more about it now. Uh, so I'll turn to Doris and say, Doris, just to start. So as I said, this was new to both of us. So um, I wonder what concerns or maybe hesitations you might have had when you were approached by AIP about playing the role of cultural liaison. Do you remember what your kind of initial response was? Well, my, my biggest concern was not knowing what to do or not knowing how to speak. For me, it was the first time that I was being part of something big and something super special that involves my story, my life, and knowing that my pain will help others to understand the life of an immigrant. 
and understand the reasons why we immigrate to the United States. And, and I think also, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is your first time working with youth directly in this way as well. Is that right? It is, yes. It is my first time. So those, yeah, so those are two big asks, I think. So, so you're a member of the community, and we've been able to connect with you, um, and you're willing to not only share your story, you know, your very personal story of coming to this country as an unaccompanied child, but also talking about that with children, which for some of us who work with youth, that's kind of what we do, but, but for other folks, it, that can be really daunting, I would imagine, you know, if it's not part of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but how did you feel about the aspect of getting to work directly with kids who had a similar experience to yours? So I felt comfortable saying, first of all, I am an immigrant and I, and I am very proud to be one. I shared with them how, to, how frustrated I felt at the English offices in Texas. And by saying that, I was connected with the kids and they shared, and they also shared with me how they felt at that call room. Something that I like to share with kids when I got to my father's house, that there were so many closed doors and I didn't know why there were so many doors. I remember that. I and thought so, they were wrong bathroom. Yeah, I remember you saying that and how the kids perked up. So, yeah. so to go back, you saying you shared with them right away that you were a, an immigrant and that you had been a former unaccompanied child and that your, one of your um, remembrances was just coming into an American apartment, I guess, and seeing all the different doors that were closed. And the kids kind of responded like, yeah, right, I remember that. And then you both, you and the group of kids sort of talked about how in your countries in Central America, there just aren't, you know, places that people live don't have that many doors. So just a, a little observation like that. But it, I think it really gave them that um, the recognition of, oh, she she knows, you know, she's, she's something like us. She knows what we know. And I think they, they, you, you speak English so well, and the kids that we were working with were English learners and had different levels of, you know, English development. But you telling them that you struggled with the English language when you came here, I think that was also really meaningful. Do you remember their responses to that? Yes, yes, I do remember. Uh, I remember this girl, she was saying, oh, no, it was just very hard, and I don't know how to, um, how to learn better and how to speak better. And I told her, I was like, yeah, so I came seven years ago, and I didn't speak English at all. The only word that I knew was hello. And when I say that, she was like, oh my God, you learn so fast. And I'm like, no, it's not that I learn fast. It's, it's just, you get used to it, and you're learning like every day. And um, I felt very, I felt very happy that I was able to help them. That's my goal. Yeah, and I and I was really able to witness that and see how um, I think it's it's always helpful for youth to understand that adults struggle too, and that you're saying you know you're 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 still developing your English language, and they so they so now right away they they have so many they have so many things in common with you. They're immigrants. They some of them have been unaccompanied minors when they came into this country everybody's learning the language, you know, at, at their own pace. And, and now you've shared this like remembrance about the doors and apartments. Do you remember some of the other aspects of your experience that you shared with the students? Yeah, do you remember when I talked to them about the call rooms at the immigration offices? Yeah, how they cool. were very connected to it. Yes. We were talking about how cold it is and how the immigration officers are. And we were very connected to each other because that's when they knew, they were like, okay, so yeah, she is a really an immigrant. She really crossed the border as us. Exactly. It, and I remember not easy. The kids, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> no, no, no. Go ahead. Saying, yeah, those rooms were so cold and kind of wrapping their arms around themselves like, 
I'm remembering, you know, how they felt sort of shivering and being cold. And so right away to this sort of like body memory of what that experience was like. And, um, and again, I, I had, I been there on my own, I would not have known that I would not have known about, you know, that experience of coming from a country that, the living spaces didn't have so many doors coming into American apartments and houses and seeing closets and doors and other exits and entranceways. Um, and then so many other, just so many other sm both small things and really large things like you talked about um, just, just all the challenges that, you know, cause, cause we had been trained in the strong training um, to know that we were not to present to these kids like oh you're here in America now and everything's great right you did it so for me that that was a great learning to to realize that this there's there's so much struggle here and maybe because of what they experienced in their native country maybe because of what they experienced on their journey or maybe because of what's happening now they there may be active trauma symptoms so there may be um, lots of other challenges so I think that you are able to kind of ground them with that as well and not just sort of do this superficial like, yay, well, you're here in America now. And so, you're, you know, you're starting over and everything's going to be great. Was that something that you kind of remember when you came to this country for the first time, maybe people speaking to you in that way that we were trained not to do? Well, so, yeah, when I came here, especially because I was with, um, with my father at the beginning in Florida, and he didn't want me to go to school. So when I came to Boston and when I started looking for um, school and started looking for, for jobs as well, I do remember someone telling me, oh yeah, you're gonna learn really fast and this is very easy. But other people were telling me, no, 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 don't go to school because this is very hard. And I just remember how frustrated I felt. And especially because I was 18 already. So my, my situation was complicated because I was without family. And that put me in a really um, bad situation. But when I was with the kids, I realized that we can say, oh yeah, it's gonna be easy, you can do it. But it's very frustrating. It, it is very frustrating because first of all, the language is different. Second, classes are different. Third, we do many things here that we don't do back home. And I just feel like we need to understand about age, um, culture, because yeah. there are many things that we need and things that we want to people, we want people to. Yeah, so not to just kind of minimize what they're going I through. Or or pretend that it's all going to be so easy and actually acknowledge that they're doing something really challenging and, and have been. And they, and part of what um, we start out with in the strong curriculum is inner strengths and outside supports. And we talk about, you know, the inner strengths that you, you know, allowed you to be in your native country that allowed you to complete your journey here and that allow you to be here with us today you you have inner strengths that brought you here and then you have outside support so who are the people in your family and your community and your school so that that connection was made early on so Doris um how was it for you to revisit and share with the students some of your past traumatic experiences as a former unaccompanied child I, w I wonder if there, you know, that felt overwhelming or overly stressful for you at times. So, honestly, I really want to say that therapy is super important because I could never share my experiences or my stories with anyone without having therapy when I was in high school. For me, it was complicated, but I knew that all of us as, as immigrants go through similar things. And that helped me to be able to share a little bit of my experiences and my story with them. Honestly, I feel like I share what I share with my heart in my hands. Yeah, I could tell and that. And that makes it's a beautiful connection and natural 
Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you're saying that it it was actually ended up being something positive for you to do. Is that correct? Yes, it was very positive for me to do because I feel like everything that I went through, it was for a reason. And I do believe that things happen for a reason. And now that I'm here, and now that I'm able to help kids and talk to them, I just feel like it was worth it at the end. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they just had such um such a strong positive response to you. And as I said, I think it, it was seeing you, oh, you know, she looks like she could be someone in my family, you know, hearing you speak, like, oh, I know, you know, this is, this is the language with the accent that my family members speak. Um, she know, you know, these, these reference, these sort of small details about um, how our lives are. And you were really, you really persevered at kind of putting out conversational topics to connect with them. So we're talking with the teenage girls and you brought up what music do they like? What kind of quote, like what did they notice when they came to this country about the styles or the fashion? You know, what was different, what was similar? Um, and that really got, I can think got them talking to you as like, oh yeah, you know, th th those were, there were some um, major contrasts that they thought, I think they enjoyed talking about and explaining to us. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember um, that they didn't like the clothing. And I remember that they were saying that they were, they miss their clothing from back home. And honestly, I did too. For a few, for the first uh, few years, it was very hard for me to find clothing because I didn't like the clothing from here. But they're just little experiences that we connected to yeah, and with them is that I I know that we had some moments that were pretty sad for all of us on one day in particular when the younger kids were, were sharing about the losses of some of their loved ones. Um, both people that they had lost people who had died when they were home in their native countries and also the losses that had occurred as a result of their separation and it seemed that every student every one of the the students in our group had a story like that and um i remember that that being a hard day for all of us um so and i i think we all kind of had tears in their in our eyes um and I, I, again, I, I'm wondering, like, how, what was that like for you? And um, I was, I guess I was kind of concerned about everybody in the room, um, mostly the kids, but also you. And what, what, you know, what sort of, what were some ways that you were able to process a day like that? So I had many mixed feelings because as you can could see in, her, in their eyes, they were very, they were just talking about, her, about it as something normal without realizing that it's very painful. And I felt very sad because when I was back home, I felt the same thing. I was very, I didn't, I feel like I didn't know how to be sad because the violence back home is really bad. And I do remember when they were talking about family members being in jail or family members that pass away and not knowing how hard it is for them. And I just feel like even families, they need to talk a little bit more with the kids. Yeah, and I was, remember, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it was just actually hard for me. And I know it was very hard for you as well. Yeah, and, and you know what, what I, I think this was um, one of my favorite moments of the whole 10 week group, when we did two groups was, um, as we were feeling that way, we had to transition because our kids went to lunch after our session or they're going to their next activity. And um, one of the students said, let's take three deep breaths. 
which was one of our body calming practices that we had taught them. And he led us in three deep breaths. You know, he led the group of us students, he led the adults. And that I felt like was, it was the perfect response. And we all, I, I, I know I felt better. And we, we breathed together. And then that shifted the energy. And it showed me that like, wow, he's, he learned this skill and he's actually using it at the most appropriate time. And all the other students joined in. So that was a skill that they had actually been using. Um, and that, that really did kind of allow us to part in a way that did, it didn't feel too disruptive or abrupt. I know, I know. I do remember that day and I just felt like it was very, like it was very good for us because we were like, okay, so he knows that we have to do it. He knows that it's very important and it's good to know that he is going to practice more with um, breathing. Yeah, that was a really sweet day. Um, so to go back to your experience, so you, when you were in high school and I know you had um, the, the great fortune of being in a very supportive high school in the Boston area. But when you were at that age, what do you think would have been your response had a, a, a school staff member invited you to like, oh, Teresa, I'm putting together a group with other students so you can talk about your experiences as an immigrant or as a newcomer. Um, what, would, what do you think you would have felt like if someone had made that response to you? I mean, made that request to you? And then do you think your response would or would not have been different if they said, and, and one of the group leaders is someone who's also an immigrant and came from, from your country and, and she'll be there to help run the group. What, can you think back to how you might have felt about that? Well, honestly, I was very, when I was in high school, I was very insecure and fearful. I didn't know how to express myself and how to communicate with other people. But honestly, I would love to go to the strong group because I wanted to have a normal life and I wanted to be happy and the strong group offers someone to listen to you and at the same time to meet more people who share similar experiences with you. And especially if you, if in the group there is a person who is going to be talking and is a person from either my same, the same country as me or an immigrant person who knows, who knows what the situation is as an immigrant and who understands good everything about being here either legally or illegally it is very important i feel like it was very important that i mean sorry i feel like that will be very important for me as yeah and you make a, a good group. point yeah you make a good point that um you think you would have responded to it positively and especially the fact that there'll be someone from your country who's an immigrant co-leading, but even if they just said, and there's another person who's, who's also an immigrant, whether or not they were from your country, just to know that they'd had a similar experience. Exactly, yes, yes. I feel like the connection is, is, is better because you don't feel like you are alone and you don't feel like you're gonna be judged for others because the person who is gonna co-lead the group is an immigrant as well. Yeah, I, I think that's where the cultural liaison role really matters. And um, you know, as I said, I, I've led lots of groups with kids. I, it's one of the major aspects of my job is leading these evidence-based trauma treatment groups. Um, and for this one, for Strong, I was excited and looking forward to it, but I knew that I didn't have this shared experience as someone born in this country and that um, well, I've read a lot about it and have friends who've had that experience and, you know, have learned as much as I could. It's not the same because of those, those little details that you mentioned and um, those, you know, describing how cold it was in the ice rooms, describing um, different foods that you enjoyed or, you know, just the clothes and the music. So um, I could, I couldn't have done that authentically. So I had these clinical skills and experience working with youth, and you brought in your whole lived experience, and together we, you know, that that that, that combination seemed like the, a great fit to get the kids to open up because I I 
as I said, I've worked with a lot of kids, but I don't know that they would have opened up to me in the way that they opened up to you. And um, so I, I would, I would recognize that some people who may be approached to be a cultural liaison might think, but I'm not, I'm not a clinician, or I'm not a social worker, or I don't work professionally with kids. But what we saw was that that didn't matter. You know, if, if, if the other leader had those skills, the cultural liaison um, could come in and bring their, their gifts and their talents and their own skills um, and, and be really exemplary in that role. Did you find that to be true? Yeah. Yes, honestly, um, I feel like a person can have a really good background with kids and a, and a very important um, college diplomas. But if the person doesn't know the story, if the person can make the connection with an immigrant student, that will be very hard for the student and also for the um, liaison. I just feel like it's very important to really know the story and to get to it with the kids and have that connection. And you can have this connection just for going to college. This connection, I just feel like it's a life experience. Yeah, absolutely. It didn't matter what, what your education level was. Um, it was. It was just what what you had lived through, what you're, how you're living now. And, um, and I feel like you were able to um, be open to a point that you felt comfortable with about your challenges and what was hard and what's still hard, but also provide hope. And they could just see you as a, you know, as kind of an example of hope of someone who's standing in front of them, speaking English, getting to, you know, have this great opportunity with the students and be in their classroom. I, I, I think a lot of them kind of look to you as, oh, I could do what she's doing, or I could, I could be some something like her when I grow up. Did you have, did you have that feeling as that you were talking to the kids? I did, and not only the feeling. Um, someone told me one of the girls. She was like, I really want to do what you're doing, and I felt very happy just by hearing what she said to me. Yeah, and you know, and I think before you came in, they probably hadn't seen someone in that role before. Um, there's um, a wonderful clinician at the school who speaks fluent Spanish, but she's also an American and was born in this country. And so I, again, they maybe haven't seen you doing what you're doing to even imagine that they could do that. So um, thank you so much, Doris. I just can't express my admiration and my appreciation enough for um, how you, you know, how you were willing to do this. I know that there was some nervousness, and I think um, one of the things that helped, and that helped me a lot too, because I was nervous too, was we we had the manual, and that's what's so great about the strong and CBITS and bounce back programs is. They're manualized, and so we have we have the manual in English and in Spanish, and you could literally follow it along, you know. And and you and I would always meet before the group and say, you know, here's here's the sections that you're going to do, and and you know this is what's next. So so that I I think that gave us a great sense of kind of um, consistency and stability. <laughs> and I know we sometimes ran out of time because the kids started talking so much. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, for me, it was very good because we always like try to um, talk before the group because I honestly didn't want to be in the group and read in the book. I try to be more natural for them and to, to, to feel like it was something coming from my heart. Yeah, and you, you right, did and that really book. well. And that yeah, because the, the time was very, um, I feel like it wasn't enough time for us to be, to talk with them, but um, I know. hopefully in the future. <laughs> yeah, we, I know they didn't want us to leave and we didn't want to leave either, but um, I feel like that's a good, that's a good point to kind of end on because we, you, I learned a lot from you. I learned a lot from my experience. I learned a lot from the strong training itself. And what you just mentioned about how we would always check in before, that would be a major recommendation I would make to anyone who's working with a cultural liaison is, um, 
just to, to be able to spend time with them in initially to kind of go over the manual, you know, find out what questions they have, you know, going, just kind of looking at the pages and breaking it down like we did, like, here, you know, here's what we're going to do today. And, and we'll, you know, we'll do as far as we have time for, if we have more time, we'll do this. Um, so that we always went in with a plan and then you had time to really look it over so you were able to, you know, feel like you were prepared, even though, you know, things are going to come up that we couldn't have anticipated. But I think that, that you know, pre-planning and that check-in and us both having the manual, both having our own copies that, you, you know, could kind of spend time looking through was really important. And then you and I came up with this structure of, of having time after the group. So that we could process what happened and kind of go over uh, anything that stood out, anything that we might have wanted to follow up with, because we were also lucky to have those great contacts at the school, the school social workers. So we could we could pass on anything that we thought they sh they needed to know that wasn't breaking confidentiality, but that was actually I think um, at one point some students asked you for some assistance and wanted you to to share some information with their their school staff, is that right? Yes, yes. Um, it was a problem with another girl and she told me to talk to the um to the um, person at at school and I felt very happy because I felt like they had a connect they had a really strong connection with me to and trust and trust to tell me what was going on in her classroom and with her friend. And that was very um uh that was something really big for me, and I felt very grateful yeah that that did show a lot of trust and so that that processing that you and I would do afterwards to say um you know this this went well, like oh, I don't know, do you think they got this particular section? Should we maybe review that at the beginning of the next group and oh I'll, let's I'll send an email to Allie so she knows that this happened like that. So that time I felt was really valuable. And I think you felt that way too. Yes, yes, definitely. So that's a that's a recommendation I would also make just that the the processing also to so because like I said, there were there were days where it was sad and there were days that, you know, it was emotional. And I would I would guess maybe more so for you because it was, you know, it was closer to you. You said you were really speaking from your heart. And so we would always take time to just be together and kind of re-regulate our nervous systems after the group and kind of ground ourselves so that you could go on with the rest of your day. Yeah, yes. That was something very, very nice, very um, good. It was actually a very good experience for both of us and I bet it was a very good experience for them as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, yeah, that's, that's a perfect kind of closure point for us. We all, we all learn from each other. So um, again, thank you so much, Therese, for your participation in that um, group facilitation, in your participation today, and for, you know, talking about what, what this experience was, was like for you. So I just, I guess I'll ask one more question, even though I said that was a closing point. What would you say to someone who told you that they had been um, approached to be a cultural liaison and, and they were considering it? What would you tell them? <sighs> I don't know. It's something, I just feel like the connection is very important. And how to talk to the kids and how to connect with them and how to be a person who can help them and we need to like make the connection very strong with them and I know it's something that we have to do every day in every session but I just feel like one of the biggest challenge for me was for the kids to express themselves and we know that it was a lot of pain for them. Yeah, so, you yeah always, I feel like you, trust. Yeah, you were really great about holding that space for everyone to talk. And and we, we started to arrive a little bit early even to have some time with the students. And then with the seventh grade girls, we arranged that you could have a little one-on-one -on -one with everyone. So 
there was there's a lot of um, space for flexibility with this curriculum where we I think we we extended the groups with the littler kids because they wanted to talk so much so we we added in a group because you were very um, you were very assertive about saying you know I, I want them all to be able to to say what they have to say so we didn't have to leave anybody out and that you know you really advocated for that and I thought that worked really well <laughs> thank you it was honestly it was very hard because I was trying to um, give the chance to all of them because I didn't I just wanted to hear everything they wanted to say but I know that we were um, back in the time which is it was very hard for both of us but yeah definitely I feel like meeting before it before it, the session and after the session is very important to understand what's going on in the group or how we can manage this group better and what things we should change in the group or things that we can just continue doing it doing it because it really works yeah well i look forward to working with you more and um i i'm grateful that the students have you um in their life as a support system as a role model as a cultural liaison and um we're we're gonna keep doing it i hope no, thank you. Thank you for the trust, first of all, because I know it's very hard to be in a group where uh, you are basically, basically, you didn't really understand what was going on because I was like speaking in fast all the time and I was trying to translate at the same time. Thanks for the trust. All right, Therese, great to talk to you and I'll talk to you soon. I will talk to you soon. Well, Susan and Doris, I want to thank you so much for sharing the beautiful work that you that you do together and and thanks to your whole team at the alliance for inclusion and prevention um, for sharing with us and i also want to thank everybody for joining today's conversation we hope that you'll join us for future episodes in this series focused on trauma-informed care for unaccompanied immigrant youth thanks so much